Well, it's 2020 and Lenovo has finally run out of the tens digit for their standard 14 and 15 inch ThinkPad T's. You've seen in my other video that the previous generation T490 and T590 were common with the P43S and P53S. Lenovo is stuck with this commonality, simply calling these the T14, T15, with the performance models called the P14S and P15S, all designated as Generation 1. I was able to get my hands on the highly spec'd out P14S for this review, but the video will discuss all four and processes will be common for all. The 14-inch models come in at 3.5 pounds, slightly less depending on the screen you go with, and the 15 models are just under 4 pounds. Connectivity is identical for all the Intel models. On this side you have USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 connector, Thunderbolt 3 docking station connector, USB 3.2 Gen 1, HDMI out, audio connector, and micro SD slot. On the opposite side, optional smart card slot, always on USB 3.2 Gen 1, Ethernet connector, and security lock slot. On the rear there's just a nano SIM card tray. Standard multi-touch touchpad and track point. Keyboard has good travel for the thickness. The 15 inch models have a numeric keypad on the right side here. This unit doesn't have it, but a fingerprint reader is optional as well. Two two watt speakers on the top. There are many screen options. This particular one has the 4K 500 nit option. The glossy finish might not be for everyone, but I really like the brightness, sharpness, and 100% Adobe color gamut. Lenovo has done a good job enhancing their screens over the last few years and I'm glad to see a 4K high brightness option offered on the base T model as well. Microphones and webcam up top, privacy shutter when you want to block the camera. The biggest difference between the T and P models is that the P comes with NVIDIA Quadro Discrete Graphics Standard. The i7 T models are configurable with NVIDIA GeForce for an additional cost, but the i5 versions only come with integrated Intel graphics. All four models have the same 10th generation Intel processor options. RAM is split like older models, one module soldered to the system board, and one dim socket accessible for removal or upgrade that I'll show later. Lots of display options including a touchscreen, and storage is limited to one NVMe slot. I was happy with battery life, I was able to stream Netflix at 90% brightness for over 6 hours. I didn't upgrade any of the components for this specific unit, but upgrading the hard drive and RAM remain very easy. If you're going to do so, the first step is disabling the built-in battery. To do this, first make sure to turn off Fast Startup in Windows, then we'll have to go into our BIOS. Press Enter and F1 during boot up. Go over to the Config and down to Power. Scroll down to Disable Built-in Battery and click Enter. Click Yes and the computer will shut down. Opening this unit is just as difficult as previous models, unfortunately. There are six captive screws. Unloosen them with a Phillips head screwdriver. You'll also want to make sure you take out the Nano SIM card tray so that it doesn't bend. Now I found it much easier to use a pry tool to start at the back and slowly pop off the cover, moving around the right side. Then the cover will lift off this way. Underneath you'll find a 51 watt hour battery. It's actually listed as 50 watt hours on the spec sheet. The processor is here with fan exhaust. The accessible RAM slot is here. I purchased mine pre-populated, but you can always drop in a dim yourself if desired. Here is the SSD that can be upgraded as well. WAN slot here. I noticed that the protective coverings are now scored, which makes pulling them back easier. They also feel slightly thicker. The commonality between the units can be seen in the system board here. Coming up and around the fan is one solid piece with connectors on the right side. The left side connectors are all connected via ribbon cables, and this allows for commonality on the bigger models. There's little dead space on the 14 inch, but the 15 inch, there will be more unused areas around here. To put the cover back on, start at the bottom lip and work your way around, pushing down until the cover snaps back in. Resecure the screws and put the nano SIM card tray back in. You'll have to connect your adapter power the first time you boot up since you disabled the built-in battery. I'm used to seeing PM981A SSDs in the smaller capacity drives. I maxed this configuration out with a 2TB hard drive and it came with a Toshiba XG6-P. Read and write speeds tested very well. Now, you may be tempted to use the micro SD slot as a second hard drive. Certainly nothing wrong with this, especially for mass storage, but the speeds are significantly slower than PCI NVMe speeds. There's also an AMD version of the T14, and the 8-core outperforms the Intel i7s and should come in a bit cheaper as well. RAM maxes out at 32GB, and at the time of this video, a 4K screen isn't offered. Dimensions and weight are the same as the P14S. Since Lenovo rebranded the model line this year, 
I thought it'd be fun to see how far the 14 inch ThinkPads have come in almost a decade. Here's a side by side with my T420 that I reviewed 8 years ago. While a lot has changed as far as standard speeds and streamlined form factor, a lot remains the same. Still a SD slot, micro now. Still two video ports, a handful of USBs. The biggest change that has saved plenty of space is the removal of the CD-ROM and the use of NVMe hard drives instead of the larger 2.5 inch. It's nice to know that inside you still have access to upgrade RAM and hard drive for custom upgrades. That's it. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to engage in the community discussion below.